Gateway Astrology Media Astrology, Geopolitics, Grand Conjunction December 21st at 2020 December 21st, 2020 at 10.02am London time the sun moved into the sign Capricorn which marks the beginning of the summer solstice at that moment Jupiter was at 0 degrees 24 minutes Aquarius and Saturn was at 0 degrees 26 minutes Aquarius. By 16.13 p.m. and 16 seconds on said day, December 21st, 2020, Saturn and Jupiter were perfectly aligned at 0 degrees 28 minutes Aquarius and stayed within a minute of each other until around midnight on the 21st when Jupiter, the faster moving planet, had moved ahead of Saturn by 0 degrees 2 minutes and will continue to separate away from the slower moving Saturn. In astrology, Jupiter is known as the greater benefic, implying that Jupiter's energy is generous, benevolent, optimistic and expansive. Jupiter implies no boundaries, whereas Saturn implies restriction, austerity and makes sure that we all pay our dues. Saturn is authority, whilst Jupiter is autonomy. Saturn, as ruler of the sign Capricorn, implies time and all its limitations, also responsibility, also career, prestige, tra tradition, time honoured, and of course society, the collective, anything in the public domain, such as institutions and their role as paternalistic maintainers of said society. Each planet comes with their own brand of energy, as described for Jupiter and Saturn in the previous paragraph. Mercury will be quick, curious, communicative. Mars will be fiery, spontaneous, brave. Sometimes we can confuse the energy of a planet with the way it expresses itself when it is in a particular sign. For example, Jupiter with its optimism, expansiveness and its quest for higher truth is now in the sign Aquarius. So Jupiter will now express these traits in a very Aquarian way. The planet is the energy, and the signs give the planet's energy its colour. If Jupiter was now in the sign Virgo, then the same upbeat, expansive energy would be expressed in Virgoan ways, or put to Virgoan tasks. So now, today, at the Winter Solstice 2020, we have two very key planets coming together in an alignment that has occurred only twice in the past 2,000 years. Saturn conjunct Jupiter in the sign Aquarius. 2000 years is a very significant time cycle in the journey of humankind and Pashamama. This 2000 year time cycle is associated with the precession of the equinoxes. The word precession implies a backward or reverse motion and that, it is, and that is indeed the case. From 2000 years ago, the birth of Christ Jesus, or Yeshua, to his more Gnostic followers, was the start of the Piscean Age. And naturally, you would expect the next epoch or age to be Aries, as Aries follows Pisces in the journey of the planets around the zodiac. But, and this is a very big but, the precession of the equinoxes, which in fact marks out the journey of the pole or Earth axis that runs through the center of the Earth from north to south, and is connected at right angles to Earth's equator, which in turn, as the equinoxes, equinox points, points connected at either side, traces out a backward path around the zodiac as the Earth and all the other planets move forward around the zodiac. Bear with me. <laughs> As the Earth journeys around the Sun, it spins on its axis, one full revolution every 24 hours. 365 of these revolutions, isn't it? and it has made its way once around the Sun. As our Earth rotates on its axis, one full revolution every day, and it continues around the Sun, that pole in the middle of the Earth will wobble. It's an even wobble, but over a over the course of one year, 365 revolutions of the Earth on its axis, it will lean in towards the sun, stop at um, the summer solstice, 
then come back, stop when it will be level at the equinoxes and then continue that way, stop at the winter solstice now and then move in that direction. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then stop it, yeah, leaning in towards it and, and it does that every year. This is what causes our seasons. And that pole in the middle, which is connected to the equinoxes, at either end of Earth's equator, which is what we are concerned with, would appear to move backwards around the zodiac in the whole process of us going around the sun in a forward motion. Final point to make on this is that it takes around, it takes 25,000 years for that pole to do that wobble all the way around the zodiac and map out that journey. That's why it's sometimes called the great year. So this means that it takes 2,100 years to pass through one sign. It's just spent the last 2,000 years in the sign of Pisces, the fish, and we'll spend the next 2,000 years in the sign of Aquarius. Quickly, if I can manage this. There is the great big sun. And this little spot in the middle here is our Earth. By comparison, it's probably smaller. And it goes around the sun. So I've blown this up a bit. We've got our Earth's the ecliptic, that straight line from the sun, we go around on. But every day, as the Earth spins on its axis, it spins one full revolution and moves forward a degree around the sun. Spins another full revolution because in, in the daytime, England is facing the sun. And once, it, because it's the Earth's rotation that we're concerned with. So in the evening time, so in the daytime, we're facing the sun closer. And in the nighttime, it's spun around its axis and then we're away from the sun and it's night time. Well, when it does that spin in the 24 hours and moves around the sun, as it comes around the sun, it, it does that one day, moves four degree. Another all turn, moves another day around 365 days, one turn, and it goes all the way around. But as it's turning and moving around, it's also tilting that way for three months from winter solstice to from spring equinox because the equinox is it straight so then it leans that way for three months comes back level to the equinoxes moves that way and that way and as you can see that's what causes the seasons i thought i might be able to do that a bit better than that but i didn't do it so well and as the earth there's the there's the sun there's the earth but call the earth there um, and the axis is going through. So it's going up. So spin one day, move a bit, spin, move, spin, move, spin, move, spin, move. But as it's doing those two actions, it's spin, move, and tilt. Spin, move, tilt, spin, move, tilt, until it gets that way. Then it's spin, move, and tilt the other way, tilt the other way. This causes the seasons. If you're into astrology and you've been trying to work that out, it took me years to understand all this, mainly because when the sun's there and the earth is going around the sun, that sunrise, the sunrise isn't the sun coming up over, over the earth from the east and then set in the west. Sunrise is the sun coming around, around. But it isn't even the sun coming around, it's the earth going around. And it isn't about the earth going all the way around the sun, it's about the earth spinning on its axis, that sunrise. So England's ear at midnight, and then by midday, it's turned round facing the sun, and that's daytime. Now, as it's done that in the 24 hours, it'll move round one degree, one day. And as it's doing that, as I've just tried to say, it leans like this. It does that in one year. The pole in the middle, it leans as it's turning and it's going around. It keeps on going like that. That 
that wobble causes the seasons but as it's wobbling it doesn't just wobble like that it does a thing like this like a cone and that map marks the zodiac and it takes 25,000 years to go around we're currently just come out of Pisces and we're going into Aquarius because that map comes backward around the zodiac as we go forward around the zodiac we've just spent 2,000 years going through Pisces backwards and now we're at 29 degrees Aquarius coming back through Aquarius backwards and this is the 2,000 years of the new age of Aquarius I hope you get that folks <laughs> right anyway I'll continue This is why this new age is Aquarius rather than Aries. I will be expanding more on this in future articles because it's actually critical to know this stuff. The Tropic of Capricorn and the Tropic of Cancer, as well as the Earth's equa equator, the ecliptic, come into play in this wobble, and a much better understanding of mythology and the archetypal journey of the fool in the tarot deck and the journey of the sun, the son of man, <laughs> can be absorbed. Yes, all these things tie into the quote-unquote mystery. This wisdom is esoteric. It, this wisdom is esoteric, and pertains to the secrets of the secret societies. But the veil is lifting, and under it you will find that all these things, like astrology, telepathy, ritual, and number, including seasons, timing, and religious festivals and personalities, most of which we have been conditioned to be wary of or warned, is some bad thing that will likely consume us if we go, if we dare go near. These are exactly the things that have been used against us by ruling powers and their puppet masters. And these are exactly the things that we need to familiarize ourselves with and utilize ourselves for good. If we are to stand any chance of making ourselves spiritually strong. <laughs> if we are to stand any chance of making ourselves spiritually strong. And I've just clipped masses my God. I've lost my place these are exactly the things that have been used against us by ruling powers and their puppet masters and these are exactly the things that we need to familiarize ourselves with and utilize ourselves for good if we are to stand any chance of making ourselves spiritually strong with a view to defeating this malign force. We are currently at the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Rarely in astrology does something happen in our lives instantly at the precise time of, of a conjunction or transit. In actuality, the newly created energy integrates itself instantly. The field and its components are affected immediately, but we have to be proactive in this. Also, this energy shift will be subtle for most, and it seems in my experience that there is a delay in manifested positive events in our personal world, and it takes time for the new wave of energy to work its magic. This is why I stress that the Cabal are on it with this energy. They always know it's coming, and they know how to work with it, and when for their own nefarious agenda. This new age of Aquarius is now being given a very big boost by two of the most potent planets in our solar system, and it is taking place at the winter solstice, which is another very significant annual occurrence. And at the winter solstice for the last several years, that Capricorn point that defines the winter solstice is aligned with the galactic center. I could go on about the Mayan time cycle, which recently came to a head in 2012, or the very important 1300 year Sara cycle, which is associated with eclipses. Suffice it to say that this point in time is momentous by virtue of the fact that we have so many important cycles ending and beginning at around the same time here at the start of the 21st century. Currently our world is in chaos. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear, there appears to be some external force that is hell bent on destroying humanity and building it back in a way that transformed the human experience and in fact human biology. In my strategy for riding what appears to be these current very turbulent waves, my plan is to present more astrology for those who do have ears to ear 
in order to encourage and network and provide spiritual sustenance. If you have stumbled upon this video today and you resonate, then keep stopping by for more links and posts pertaining to astrology and holistic natural health. Remember that vitamin C in very high doses can stop any disease or virus in its tracks. Pure iodine and bicarbonate of soda are staples in any natural health regime. 10 grams of vitamin C might be a high dose for you to begin with, but I take between 30 and 50 grams of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, when I have an infection, and the idea is to take as much as is necessary for you to pass stool, and you can repeat your dose until the infection is under control and the body can maintain itself without more of it C. When you pass stool, all of the bad toxins and pathogens in your body will be passing out at the same time. But be warned, knocking back 30 grams of ascorbic acid in half a glass of pineapple juice let's, is, let's say, no mean feat. But it has to be like that because what it is doing is just annihilating all those viruses on contact. So moving forward, the strategy is to offer regular posts that will exercise and rejuvenate the soul. The battle for Mother Earth and humanity will only be won if we are spiritually strong. So today's takeaway, as time marches on and we head into 2021, is that change is always gradual, but this new Aquarian energy is available right now. We often think of portals as escape routes, a way out of this dimension, but at the time of this grand conjunction, we can safely think of the portal as a gateway opening for you to receive incoming energy. At the same time, I must remind you again that secret societies like the Club of Rome, the Freemasons, Skull and Bones and others, which are all connected to the Bavarian Illuminati of 1776 and the Templars of the Crusaders era, are not called secret, secret because people are not supposed to know about them. They are secret because they guard many secrets. They are called secrets because they guard many secrets on how the energy of our world works and how we interact with this energy. My theory is that these secret societies, or the people at the top of these societies, are the go-betweens of the off-grid controllers, and the salient point is that they are master astrologers, and they have the technology to intercept this Aquarian energy and manipulate it before it gets to us, so that they control events, reactions, perceptions, and dictate an inhumane narrative here on the ground. Go to the Apocrypha. Why were these books omitted from the Bible by decree? Go to the book of Enoch. It's all there. So to clarify, Aquarius is concerned primarily with freedom and justice for all. Aquarius can often be seen as eccentric, weird, or the outsider in the true Albert Camus sense. Aquarius is intelligent and innovative, whereas Aries leads from the front and is always just ahead of the rest Aquarius is way out ahead of his or her time. I often say to Aquarius, yes, they are calling you mad now, but don't worry, 200 years after you've left the body, they will be saying you were right all along and did actually know what you were talking about. Aquarius is detached and objective. Where they are seen as defenders of the faith and champions of the underdog in the wider arena, in interpersonal relationships, they can be described as aloof, uncaring and cold even. All in all, Aquarius is level-headed with determined intelligence, and freedom and human rights mean much to Aquarius. Also brotherhood, as in the brotherhood of man. Aquarius rules technology and ceremonial white magic. Technology because of the ability to innovate, but the etymology of the word technology comes from the word technique. So this Aquarian age is the age of technique technology. Technology is not confined to the internet or smart this or smart that. A technology is anything that makes your life easier. So in that sense, we will need to be developing techniques for Mercury activation, for example, or developing new techniques to raise Kundalini, perhaps, or perhaps a fancy new shuttle service to the halls of a mente. <laughs> I'll leave it here. But our task as spiritual warriors is to bypass all negative energy and reach straight for source. People often demand a level playing field. All that is necessary is that you know the field. That is much more important.